to call to order the meeting of the Fitchburg Board of Public Works. Tonight we have a full quorum. Uh, myself, Dave Wilborn in Chambers, Kim Lobdell, Michael Granetsky, and Sarah Schroeder uh, calling in a virtual meeting. So we'll start out uh, agenda item number two, public appearances for non-agenda items. Scott, I don't believe we have anyone trying to call in. No, do sir, we? we do not. Okay. Then we'll move on to agenda item number three, approval of minutes. Do we have a motion to approve the December? Is that right? We approved those minutes last time. Okay. We got the wrong sheet. Is that is that right, or did we have an amendment on there that we? No, that was the one, um, if I'm not mistaken, where the variables were missing. Kim, yeah, all Kim people's had... names, promotions, and that kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah, but okay. now they're all in there. All right. So first, we, can we have a motion to approve the December 7th um, Board of Public Works minutes? Motion to approve. Uh, we have a second. I'll second it. Okay. So here again, the variables are filled in on here this time for the... Uh, um, the uh, person, the times, and the person uh, seconding, seconding, uh, making the motion and seconding, is that correct? Okay. Yes. All right. Any, any questions, any further questions on these? I'll call the vote. All in favor of approving the December 7th Board of Public Works minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Before you go any further, I just have one question. So we're going to do like last week's approval of meetings next month because we didn't get them on this one. I would uh, assume that's what we are going to do. Mr. Balky, you have any comment on that? We'll have both of, the, of this meeting and the previous meeting on the next board meeting. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you. So let me back up on the agenda here. All right, that takes us to uh, agenda item number four, the report from department head, uh, D director of public works, Mr. Bill Balky. All right, uh, got a few things coming up here. Uh, we got a couple of public informational meetings coming up. Uh, on February 17th, we're going to have a public informational meeting for Lacey Road reconstruction. That would be the reconstruction from uh, up to and including Seminole Highway, uh, for the intersection improvements all the way to Fitcherona Road. So that entire length is going to get reconstructed to an urban section, intersections improvements being made at the intersection of Lacey and Seminole. And uh, we're looking to have a public informational meeting on the 17th for that from 5.30 to 7 p.m. We'll be getting links out there for, the, uh, for that meeting, as well as uh, information regarding any exhibits and, and things we can put out there on our website. So we're gonna be working on that over the next week to get that out and published and noticed to everyone. So we've got that meeting coming up. And then on Thursday, the 25th of February, another public informational meeting for Syene Road reconstruction. And this would be from uh, Aurora Avenue all the way up to McCoy, or it would be just south of Lacey Road up to uh, the McCoy intersection, a little bit past there. So we're, we're looking for public input on that project as well uh, as, as far as our proposed design. And uh, then we'll be going forward uh, further with the design on that. The uh, Dave uh, Wilborn? Yes. Uh, uh, did you wanna do something with uh, TTC or, or are, you, are we gonna be looking for nominations in the near future? You, uh wouldn't hurt me any if you want to look for nominations in the near future. Okay, so that'll be an item coming up at our next board meeting uh, to look for um, a new nominee for the Traffic and Transport or Transportation and Transit Commission. Uh, the, the Board of Public Works is required to appoint somebody from the board to serve on that committee, as well as from the Plan Commission. So, um, I guess we'll be looking for for new nominees for uh, that that position coming up uh, coming. Uh, at our next meeting. The, uh, so Dave, Dave Wilborn was the, the the liaison and now he's not going to be the liaison, is that correct? I would correct. like to get off of it, yes. Okay. 
So just kind of, you know, put that in the back of your mind as to who might like to serve on, on that commission uh, for input. We've got a lot of uh, important projects coming up uh, with like the Lacey Road project that we're gonna be looking for input, Syen Road input. Uh, the transit is very important. We've, we're, we're gonna be having a lot of meetings this year uh, to keep those projects moving forward. So uh, appreciate your thoughts on, on considering to be nominated for that. The, we're still working really, uh, really hard on our end of year audit for our 2020 infrastructure improvements that we put in. You know, we're, we're measuring all the pipes that we put in the ground, all the, the pavement that was put down last year. So um, we're, we're really into that this right now. Got bids coming out for crack filling and crack sealing. Um, we're, we've got a wayfinding signage proposal that's out for bids right now. It's a community-wide wayfinding signage uh, or uh, directional signage to different places within the city. Uh, we've got an RFP coming out for uh, general engineering services uh, for consultants to provide assist with the city on different projects as we need them throughout the year uh, for construction engineering or specialized work such as stormwater or traffic engineering. So we have those kind of like on a short list that we can select from as long as they're pre-qualified. Uh, we can, uh, you know, skip the going out for proposal part of it and negotiate directly with those consultants to, uh, to get those services. It just cuts down on the time frame for, for doing that. We're uh, um, got a lot of development reviews, a lot of administrative things, uh, development agreements and, and things like that, easements that we're bringing through council at this time. And our, our technician two position, uh, he resigned, it was earlier in January. And uh, so we've had that out for, for uh, advertisement for the position. We closed it yesterday. We had 18 applications that came in for a technician two. So uh, we're pouring over those. We just got those this morning. So we're, we're looking over those to make a selection and get some interviews going with that for that. It snowed, we're plowing snow. No <laughs> snow again this week. Uh, uh, no equipment broke down this time. So uh, we got things done on time. Any questions for Bill? Um, Bill, I, I have one. Um, where, where do we have Lacey uh, the, from Seminole to Fitch Rona um, in the CIP? What, what year? That will be constructed in 2022. It's under design right now. Uh, Mars EOR working through Promega has the contract for design. So um, that's why you haven't seen any bills come through for work with that project because uh, Promega is doing the design work and the city's going to reimburse them through the TID and through our general obligation uh, funding. Thank you for the explanation. Is that a common approach? Uh, we, we do that. We have done that quite a bit in the past. Uh, we do that with development mainly. So there's not a lot of projects where we're reconstructing roadways mainly. It's new roads, uh, new infrastructure like that. But uh, because their, their improvements are tied to the, the road that needs to get improved, they're, they're, they're building through the, the T grant and through the, the construction where we had the, their engineer just continue on with the design of that roadway. And do we, do we know, are they gonna try to be pushing, is it too early to tell if they're gonna try to be pushing traffic on the Seminole out to Fitch Rona or I'm sorry, off from Lacey um, up Seminole or out towards Fitchrona because Lacey can kind of go up and out either way. Uh, not sure what we've got for, you're talking about a detour? Um, I wouldn't say detour, just like, do we know where, um, like where a lot of the traffic is going to be going yet? Is it going to be a lot of uh, industrial trucks that are needing to get out to the highway or is it going to be more um, commuting back and forth between Promega's main campus and, and, you know, kind of their new area out off of Lacey Road? 
Uh, we, we, yeah, we've got a traffic study that's been done that kind of okay. shows how it's being distributed. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but okay. we've got a breakdown as to how it's going to get split out. Okay, very good. Any, any other questions for Bill? And I, I thought the, the um, Plows crew did, did a nice job on Sunday getting things, uh, getting things cleaned up. Um, Early in the early in the morning, so uh, again, hats hats off to them for a good job. Okay, uh, next let's move on to our agenda items. Agenda item number five. First up is resolution R-35-21, resolution to accept American Transmission Company agreement regarding public stormwater ponds within ATC easement at Crescent Crossing. Do I have a Crescent Crossing, say that fast 10 times. Uh, do I have a motion to approve this resolution? I'll move to approve it. Moved by Schroeder, do we have a second? Second. Second by Granetsky. Discussion, uh, Bill? You look pretty straightforward. Um, I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah, uh, looks pretty straightforward, uh, what, what's going on there. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, an easement that we're required um, to work within the stormwater area of the village, of the city ponds that's been installed as part of the development. And we just executed the agreement. Uh, we had some uh, language that was changed um, regarding our rights to be in that easement area. And ATC has agreed to that and, and signed that agreement so that we can forward with that. Okay. Any, any questions on this? That uh, transmission line uh, that's there, um, very familiar with that where I used to work, we owned it. Uh, it's been there since the, the 1970s. And uh, so this the subdivision has grown up around existing facilities. Just want to make that aware, everyone aware of that. Okay, then I'm going to call a vote. Uh, all right, before we, any questions for Bill on this? Let's call the vote. All in favor of resolution R-35-21, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, 5B, resolution R-173-20, resolution accepting subdivision improvements in the plat of Crescent Crossing. This was originally referred from 1031 2020 Common Council meeting. Do I have a motion to approve this resolution? I'll move to approve. Moved by Lobdell. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Schroeder. Let me just page down here. All right. So, um, Bill, you want to run us through this? Yes, the, the subdivision improvement agreement for Crescent Crossing uh, required infrastructure to be installed, sewer, water, storm water, roads, sidewalk within that subdivision. And the developer has put forward the, the improvements within that subdivision, they, they meet our specifications, they've satisfied all the requirements of the agreement. Um, and there's just a few bunch list items that we have to take care of in the spring, such as pavement marking, uh, a little bit of grading, but uh, we feel that the approval of the subdivision improvement agreement has been met. Um, and we're asking for the board to approve this so that we can accept those improvements and allow a full uh, occupancy of the, of the homes in that area. Bill, do you need us to, to uh, amend this, amend this, uh, um, amend this per the, the red line here? Do you need us to make uh, a motion to amend this? Or is that already, is that already in, in this document? We weren't sure if we were gonna be able to get the document in time for approval. So we, we wrote this previous to the agreement. But um, if you would amend the agreement, approve the agreement or amend the agreement to include this section F. 
Okay. And then I'm uh, approve the. So we will we'll make a motion. Uh, first thing I say, uh, we have a motion to amend this resolution with the following wording uh, under the now, therefore, be it resolved, section F, full acceptance of the public improvements for this phase of this plat is contingent upon approval of resolution R-3521 and execution of the ATC agreement. Do I have a motion to approve this amendment to the resolution? I so move we approve the amendment to this resolution. Do we have a second to that motion? Second. Call the vote. All in favor of the amendment to this resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Any questions on the original resolution? Then? All right. And I'm going to call the uh, approval of the uh, approval of the resolution. All in favor of the amended uh, resolution R-173-20 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Brings us back to, uh, I'm a bad scroller, so pay, pay, bear with me. Okay, next, resolution R-13-21, approving a memorandum of understanding with the town of Dunn regarding the proposed USGS Swan Creek Monitoring Station. Do I have a motion to approve resolution R-13-21? Motion to approve. Moved by Granetsky. Do we have a second? I second. Second. Thank you. Second by Lobdell. Is Claud Claudia on? I don't think so. Okay. No. All right, Bill, uh, can you give us the rundown on this one? All right. Uh, this is uh, a project that will install a monitoring station for stormwater uh, in the, the ninth or the Swan Creek that's in the town of Dunn. And it, the location is in the town of Dunn. And we're, we're installing this monitoring station to monitor the effects of development upstream from there, uh, mainly it's Fitchburg. It's Fitchburg stormwater that's coming into that area uh, to, to monitor that, to determine the effects on the Wapisa wetlands that are downstream from there. Uh, this is, was a recommendation from um, the CARP-C, it's a Capital Area Regional, Training, Tran, Regional Planning Commission, there we go, uh, to, to have this as part of the approval of future um, development within the city for the Nine Springs Creek was a recommendation, or the uh, uh, Northeast Neighborhood Associ neighborhood Area, and also the Fahey Fields um, urban service area amendment as well. Uh, because it's located in the town of Dunn, uh, the, the city had requested the town of Dunn pay a portion of the cost for the monitoring station, both for the installation, the capital costs, and the ongoing operation of the cost. The memor memorandum of understanding that you have in front of you tonight is that agreement that covers those costs uh, for payment, and we're asking for approval for that uh, for this for this agreement. Bill, for the people watching, where does uh, what's the path for the water, the stormwater, or, or water into Swan Creek into Lake Wabisa? Does does Swan Creek uh, doesn't flow directly into Wabisa? It flows into uh, wetlands where, approximately. Um, I don't have a map that's available, but it, it's hard for me to trace it yeah. out. <laughs> All right. That's but does the Swan, Swan Creek doesn't directly flow into Lake Wabisa, does it? Does no, it, flow it, into it another flows into some wetlands before it gets to Lake Wabisa. Okay. All right. Do we have any, um, going to install this, this isn't totally pre-development though. You know, this will be installed. Some of the development's gone in already. Do we have any benchmarks as far as, uh, you know, water quality and phosphorus and these things um, where it is right now? Or there, has we... been some, there has been some, uh, some studies done by, I think it was UW, where they had students out there monitoring the creek and taking tests 
that we do have some baseline information from a few years ago. So that's about as best we have. And I, I know that samples have been taken ongoing, uh, but this would be more of a permanent, uh, you know, real time monitoring that we could get the data from uh, as the rainfall events occur. Okay. Um, I understand the funding, I understand everything. What, um, what do we anticipate being done with the, with the data? How, are, how, how will we use it to improve our, our watershed if we're asking our citizens to you know, spend this money, I guess? Um, we'll be able to determine uh, relatively quickly the, the pollutants that are coming into the stream and the sources of those. So we would be able to determine uh, if it's agricultural runoff that's you know making the pollution. If um, you know, depending on what the pollutants are in there, we'd be able to determine the um, if it's more development driven and the the impacts that we have of our our management practices. You know, the ponds that we have installed. So we'll be able to do before and after monitoring of of those new you know. Uh, practices like stormwater ponds or our erosion control ordinances to, to see how those impact, how those uh, are pre and post construction. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask the question of unintended consequences. Uh, I, I am I'm certainly in favor of this. Does this? Uh, uh, let me ask you this: How could this affect the city negatively? For instance, a lawsuit or or the EPA or, or anything? Do you, do, you, do you see a mechanism, you know, mechanism that could affect us uh, negatively here? I, I, I'm not seeing it, but I, I'd like your thoughts. I, I think that's always a possibility that, uh, you know, the data may, you know, present something that would, would take us in a different direction or need to take us in a different direction. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't say for sure that would happen. Okay. Who we'll else have questions for Bill on this one? I think some of it may have to do with, you know, by installing this, you show that you're doing, making a good faith effort to monitor what is the water quality. And if you can identify where it's coming from, then you can, you know, go back and do some corrective actions so that it doesn't continue. So. I would guess if you if you do if any problems are determined, that you can identify what it is, and then as long as you're making a good faith effort to clean it up and identify what the problem is, I think that would go a long ways towards averting any negative impacts to the city. Yeah, a question I have for you, Bill: How would you div divert runoff any other direction? Um, I don't think we would divert it, but I think we would be looking for methods how to, like uh, Kim had mentioned, how to clean that up, how to mitigate the issues that we're finding. Um, the drainage is going to come to Swan Creek and it's going to go that way. We're just trying to keep the water as clean as we can. Do we have any other agreements with any other municipalities um, where either they have wells in the city of Fitchburg or Fitchburg has wells in another jurisdiction? Um, yeah, we, we do have agreements with the city of Madison. Uh, they supply us with water uh, in certain areas of the city and we supply them with water in certain areas of their city where, where it's easily served, is that your question? Um, sorry, no, the, the kind of well that we're talking about here. Um, monitoring wells? Monitoring well. Maybe more about, yeah, the, the monitoring well. Um, you know, the thing that kind of comes to my mind is Lake Barney um, with Oregon. Yeah, we, we install monitoring wells. This is actually, it's a monitoring station. Our station, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit different than the wells that we had put on in those areas, but uh, we do not have any agreements with, with the station itself. Okay. I get, I get nervous anytime we are paying for infrastructure that goes into another jurisdiction. Um, like Bill said, um, you know, it's a, or I'm sorry, like Dave said, it's, it's a good, um, good faith 
the process and, you know, some of the anticipated water flowage will be coming from the city. So I think that that's a, a responsible thing to do. Um, would also love it as some of the other surrounding communities hit some of our more agriculture land um, that we look to do these sorts of partnerships and get the same sort of, um, oh, what shall I say, um, I don't want to say compensation ratio of cost covered um, that the city of Fitchburg would be covering for um, you know, the, the town of Dunn. Yeah, it's my hope, and I don't think it would happen. You know, some lawyer lives down on Lake Wabisa, and he gets a uh, algae bloom one one too many times, and <laughs> next thing he's hiring a scientist to analyze our, our data, and he's coming after all our taxpayers. But uh, I, I I think that's a pretty far stretch here. I, I I understand why this is going in, and I it's part of the requirement for the development of that that area, which the city city supported. So I. I believe we have a we have a decent cost sharing agreement, and I, I'm in I'm in favor of this. Any other questions at this point? I have a question on what they say they'll uh, try to help yes. with the <laughs> labor hours installation. It's like that's sort of vague. What? How are you going to determine if they can or if they can't? Um, actually, what we've ended up doing is uh, working with the Wabisa Wetland Conservation Association. They are going to do all of the labor necessary to uh, pick up the samples and get them to USGS for analyzing. So uh, there would be very little with regard to the town of Dunn uh, for labor assistance and vice versa. The city of Fitchburg is going to have very little labor or administrative uh, function to, to keep the station running. So it's I think we've got a good group of people that, that once we get it up and running, it's gonna take care of itself. Bill, in uh, Claudia's report, it mentioned something about, uh, this doesn't include the cost to get power to that uh, monitoring station. Do you, do you know where the, the closest, how far the closest MG&E distribution line is, or is, is uh, can this be powered by a solar panel? Uh, to get a little better handle on that, you know, if it's gonna be, 20,000 to run an underground circuit or something there. I, I'd like to know about it now. Right. Yeah, in their cost estimate, I believe that they, they used the estimate as uh, with a solar panel to be installed. Um, but in the event that we it, it doesn't get installed with a solar panel, I think the nearest pole drop would be, uh, it's about 150 feet up the road. So we'd need another pole and a transformer likely to drop uh, some power to that station. Okay. All right, let's hope we can put solar in. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what the, with the extension of a, a single pole, it's not a lot, but it's, it could, have, could very easily double the cost, uh, double the cost here. What was the annual maintenance, expected maintenance cost? Um, it was roughly seven twenty six thousand dollars a year, I think it was, for sampling. Uh, yeah, that's at the so next resolution. Yeah, it's a, it's in the next agreement. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, any other questions on on uh, uh, resolution R dash thirteen dash. 21. Thank you. Good discussion. I'll call the vote. All in favor of resolution R-13-21 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Uh, next resolution R-2521 approving a joint funding agreement with the USGS regarding the proposed USGS Swan Creek Monitoring station, do I have a motion to approve R25-21? So moved. Moved by Lobdell, second by Wilborn. Uh, discussion, so this is discussing the yearly operating fee for this? Correct, uh, and the installation of the actual um, um, 
monitoring stations. So as, as Mike Renetsky had asked, how much is the operating part of it? Um, it's roughly $20,000 a year for the sampling and, and, and maintenance. Uh, 15,000 of it is about capital, uh, the, the actual installation of the, of, uh, of the station itself. So the, what, we, what we've done with that is we've, we've broken out the operation where the, the town and done would supply $2,000 toward the operation of the, the station on an annual basis. The uh, Lake Lapisa Conservation Association also is uh, con contributing $2,000 cash plus uh, volunteer labor hours for the sampling. And um, this is the main agreement that we have for the installation and operation of the station with the United States Geological Society. Um, I'll, I'll ask the question. Um, this, this does nothing for me where I live or my, 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 my neighborhood or the majority of, of Fitchburg that's been here. Is there a way this can be, can be put on a, a, you know, the new development to, to fund this versus, you know, taking, taking something out of the pocket of all of us or am I, am I missing anything there, Bill? Um, the stormwater comes from, you know, not only existing development, but, you know, the new development. So it is, you know, equitably charged throughout the community and in the, in the watershed. Uh, so everybody is paying a portion of that. Even the rural customers, you know, pay a stormwater uh, management fee for their, for, their, um, for their parcels that have a homestead on it. So everybody throughout the community is, is helping with this. This is being funded out of our stormwater utility, just so everyone is everyone's aware of that. Am I correct, Bill? Correct. And what other things, um, just kind of for the public at home, what, what are the other things that the stormwater uh, utility does do uh, within the city? Um, you know, again, we kind of take a look at some of the uh, water issues we've got. Um, you know, kind of on the west side of town with, with Goose Lake, we, we have down in south, we've got uh, Lake Barney again. Um, do do uh, both of those areas fall within uh, some of that jurisdiction as well? Yes, uh, the stormwater utility pays for a portion of, of those studies as well. Um, and Fitchburg always seems to be, uh, whether whether it's stormwater, whether it's streets, um, you know, we have a lot of overlap with, with other jurisdictions, and I'm glad we partner with them on some of these things. But over the last couple of years, I've, it, it's, it's, it, it seems as though Fitchburg is very aggressive in not only leading a lot of these efforts, um, in this case, water that's leaving the town versus that's coming on in. And coming up with equitable solutions for all parties. And it just sometimes seems that we're flipping the bill for a lot of that stuff. Um, whether that's just, it, it needs to happen and we step up because we're good stewards, fantastic. Um, just kind of wanted to make note that, um, you know, we have a lot of great partnerships with some of our other surrounding municipalities. And it just seems like we've got an unfair uh, share of that cost. Just a comment on that. No. Oh, thank you, Michael. Yes, good comments. Any, any other any other questions on on this? All right, then we'll call the vote. Uh, all in favor of resolution R dash twenty five dash twenty one, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Next five E resolution R dash thirty six twenty one. A resolution to release existing stormwater and drainage easement in Outlot 1 Certified Survey Map 3060, which is at 5335 Lacey Road. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll move approval. Moved by Schroeder. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Granetsky. Uh, discussion. Um, I drove down and looked at it today, Bill. Um, Give us the give us the rundown here. Uh, this easement was installed or was uh, recorded 
for a drainage way that, that comes out of the Waterford Glen neighborhood. And it was actually, the, the legal description was incorrect. It ended up being about 40 feet to the north or of where it actually is. So this, this release, we're releasing the easement uh, because there's a new CSM that's being recorded that has the easement in the correct location of where the, the stream actually is. So uh, basically we're just getting rid of the old one and recording it where it's supposed to be as part of this resolution. City will not be required to uh, uh, obtain or pay for a new easement? That's correct. Okay. Music to my ears again, all right. <laughs> And you're not going to file this until the new CSM with the other easement is also filed at the same time? Yeah, it will be a sleight of hand where we do it, you know, <laughs> right there, right in front yeah. of each other. All right. All right. Any, any other questions for Bill or any, any thoughts on this? Okay. I'll call the vote. All in favor of resolution R-36-21. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, resolution R-3721, authorizing the release of option to repurchase between the city of Fitchburg and Sub-Zero Incorporated. We have a motion to approve. I so move we approve resolution R-37-21. Moved by Wilborn. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Lobdell. Discussion. Bill? Um, many years ago, we had a, an agreement with Sub-Zero to uh, have first option of purchasing some land that was in the area. Uh, the city does not uh, need to purchase that land or does not have any need for the land. And we're um, having this agreement to release that option to repurchase it. Bill, uh, this probably happened before you with the city. Do you, have any idea what we what we thought might be use of that land? Honestly, I I don't. <laughs> okay, I don't re, I don't recall either, Mr. Wilborn. Do you? I don't recall at at all. We've been all right. here for quite a while. I yeah, well, right. we don't. It's obvious we don't. I believe this is in the area of uh, where Spoke and McKee is. That we may have had some some land there reserved for future right of way. Oh, I bet you're right. Yeah, I bet you're right. Yeah. Turn lanes and things like that. So yeah, I, I bet you're right. Okay. Any que any other questions on this? Okay. Call the vote. All in favor of resolution R-37-21. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Last 5G resolution R-3921. Approving a temporary emergency access road maintenance agreement for Terra Vesa. Do we have a Someone uh, move approval. Motion to approve. Move by Granetsky. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Again, looks like emergency emergency access. Uh, um, Bill, is this always? Uh, is this? This is kind of a special case here, isn't it? Most property or whatever would have a more than one access to it. Correct. Um, eventually, this is in the northeast neighborhood of Terra Vesa, and uh, currently we only have one access or two accesses in to the subdivision, one off of uh, Goodland Park and one off of Lacey or off of uh, County Highway M. M. The, but there's only one access to get to the school, so, so there's only one road going to the school. and. Police and fire department really need a secondary access in there to that site in case you know they, the road gets blocked from one of those other two accesses. The there is a pathway that we have installed there as a temporary access, and this agreement is just uh, indicating that the subdivider is, is responsible for the maintenance of this during uh, during this uh, while it's in place and uh, remove the snow and, and maintain it and make sure it's drivable uh, during, the, during the time. This, is, well, this will be in effect until such time as the, the remainder of the subdivision is completed and uh, a new access is um, installed out to, uh, gosh, is that Layla Road back there? 
I think it's Layla. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Very, very concise uh, explanation. Any questions on this? Do you have any idea the timing on when they will be doing the next phase of the subdivision where this would not no longer be needed? Or is that unplanned at this time? It's it's unplanned at this time. The, the developer has, as part of a, a settlement agreement with the DNR and the town of Dunn, uh, they have to wait a year after the first phase or, or what they're constructing now is fully developed and monitor the stormwater coming off the site before they can start the second phase. Uh, there's still about, I don't know, 15 acres that need to be developed within the first phase. And I think the developer is going to be coming forward with plans this year to complete that. So it'll be at least another year before, uh, after completion of that phase, before the, the road is completed. Good question, Kim. Thank you. Any other, any other for Bill on this? Then let's vote. Uh, all in favor of resolution R-39-21 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next on to agenda item six, uh, announcements. Our next Board of Public Works meeting is scheduled for February 15th, uh, two weeks from now. Bill, do you anticipate having, the, having that meeting? Yes. Okay. All right, so please mark your calendars. And if you're not gonna be able to make it, let us, let us know. On to agenda item number seven. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move. Second. Move by, moved by Grunetsky, second by Lobdell. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, we stand adjourned. Thank